welcome back. So, how does an ex-rugby player from a cattle farm who can't sing or dance end up in the West End production of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert? Well, let's find out, because Stone the Flame and Crows, it's Rayma. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ray. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Great to have you here, Ray. It's great to be here, and in answer to your question, I think it's an indictment on the producers that they put somebody like that in a musical. <laughs> <laughs> did you always know you, you, you know, how did you know you could sing or did you just have I, to learn? I still don't believe I can but uh, that's <laughs> another story. But we just heard you up, you can sing quite nicely thank you uh, very much, mm. you're Fortun okay. Fortunately there are a lot of people in Priscilla, all the rest, can sing very well and I've only got a very short little attempt so uh, don't be put off by that. Now the thing about this show that's so interesting is that you were asked to fill in weren't you for a couple of weeks in Sydney and you initially went no because you had your home and away commitments obviously yep. and then you saw the show and went this actually looks pretty good. Yeah, so you was, changed your mind? Well, it was worse than that. Um, the producer said, uh, have you seen it? I said, I saw the movie years ago. He said, no, I'm in the stage show. I said, no, I haven't seen it. He said, well, before you finally say no, come with me and have a look. So after about 10 minutes, I thought, my God, how long has this been going on? This is great fun. You know? <laughs> and before the first act was finished, uh, before Bob had even come on, uh, Gary McQueen, the producer, said, um, would you be interested in doing this in London? And I said, I haven't messed it up for you in Sydney yet. Let's just wait and see how it goes. <laughs> anyway, th that all happened, so it was really good. And how long was the run in London for? Uh, the show ran for three years in London, and when it was offered, when it started, it just didn't work out. And then a year later, um, they came back and said, whatever, and I said, I'd love to. And so I did six months. That was the original deal. And then um, I got back to Sydney, did some more Home and Away, and then they decided rather than let the show peter out audience-wise, they decided to have a controlled closing. So they said, will you come back for the last three months? We're going to have, you know, a, go out with a, a bang. big finish. Yeah. Yeah. And it was a big finish. But, yeah, no, it's a great show. That's a good way to go. So what I'm very curious about is that what happens with your home and away stuff? Because I think Alf went on a very long fishing trip for one of those experiences, didn't he? Alf went, like, for a six-month fishing trip. Imagine that. <laughs> well, Lucky Alf. <laughs> it's not easy, you know. One of, his, one of the things on his bucket list was to fish off every continent on the globe. Right. And strangely enough, that took about six months. Oh, how convenient. <laughs> so what's he doing when Alf comes to, when you come to New Zealand to do this? I've got no idea, but I'm sure they'll come up with something. He's not going to die, is he? Don't well, let him die. He's just had uh, a heart attack and a stroke, followed quickly by a stroke. So um, he's not in good shape. No, he's not <laughs> well. You know, he uh, doesn't have a good medical history, but so far, so good. You know, he recovers from all those things. Maybe he's going away for a retreat. You know, a well-being retreat. To find himself. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You know, <laughs> get healthy again. That's um, great. I want to talk about that character, Alf, quickly, because Stone the Flame and Crows. You know, your pair of galahs, all those great quotes. Are, are, you know. Are these quotes that you have just invented as you've developed the character? I'd like to say they were, but they're all stolen. Um, uh, Stone the Flame and Crows, I, got, I grew up in the, in the bush in Queensland, uh, a little town called Durrenbandy, and there was a stock and station agent there, a guy who would buy and sell sheep and cattle properties, or cattle, or sheep, or whatever. And he used to love a Bundaberg rum and coke. Right. And as the day wore on, there was more rum and less coke. <laughs> and that was where I first heard Stone the Flame and Crows. Dick Backhouse was the bloke's name, and he'd say, Oh, Stone the Flame and Crows, mate, they're an awful mob of sheep. You wouldn't pay. Oh, Stone the Flame and Crows, they must be mad. <laughs> really. Think about buying those sheep. I mean, Stone the Flame and Crows, they wouldn't get from the paddock to the truck without falling over. Stone the Flame and Crows. And so he would fit Stone the Flame and Crows into one sentence a dozen times. And I'd never forgotten it, and I loved the sound of it, so I thought, Al Stewart's got to say that. He, he's, and he says a lot. He says flaming a lot. There's somebody's actually done a remix on YouTube of every time that Alf says flaming, flaming galahs, flaming crows, fire. Wouldn't flame and do that? It just flaming everything. It's really, really funny. Uh, the thing is, though, you've been doing this role for nearly 30 years, haven't you? What have you are you then the Guinness Book of Records as the longest-serving actor in a serial? Is that is that true? Yeah, I believe so. Uh, a longest-serving actor in an Australian serial, anyway. I don't know about anywhere else. And, and certainly, some of the Coronation Street people in the UK have been oh. there longer than that. But, um, you know, those things you don't worry about too much. You just get up and go to work while you're enjoying it. And, well, and uh, it's given you a fantastic life, hasn't it? It has. Yeah. It has. Yeah, yeah, no, I wouldn't be sitting back complaining. I'd yeah. be loving every single yeah. minute of it. Um, how much has it changed on set over those years, though? You know, just the way they make the show. Have you noticed a lot of change? Yeah, look, Home and Away has reinvented itself many times over those nearly 30 years, particularly technically. You know, we, we once used to turn the fluoro lights on and have three cameras out the front and there'd be a mixing room where it would be edited on the run as it was shot and somebody would say go 
and if you got through it, it was a bit like doing theatre. If you got through it, you know, somebody you'd, you'd see another actor struggling for a line or something, and you could see the whites of the eyes. <laughs> oh, I wonder if he's going to dig himself out of this one. <laughs> but if you could, and you'd keep going, you know. And so that was how it used to be shot. Now. Uh, it's shot, we still have molly cam, but we often shoot like film with one camera, uh, different setups, different lighting arrangements for each setup. So it's, it's shot like film and it looks pretty good for something. Mm. Yeah, it certainly know, does. Made at the rate of two and a half hours a week. Of all the people that have come through, do you have a favourite that you've worked with? That's a really tough one to say, but they probably won't see it, so you can tell us. <laughs> uh, look, there's a few, if I can double up a bit. Kate Ritchie was, you know, pretty special. Judy Nunn, who was my wife for about 14 years, was great. Um, Chris Hemsworth of the, of the newer comers, you know, he was a lovely bloke and it's so good to see nice blokes doing so well. Mm. Uh, Ryan Quanton was another one that was great, Isla Fisher. You know, there are just a lot of those kids that were fantastic and so many of the really nice, dedicated, hard-working kids as well as being genetically blessed, most of them, uh, <laughs> have done well. Yeah. And quite a few Kiwis too have ended up on Home and Away oh, over the right years. right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jessica Gray Smith worked in my little bait shop until she was, met an untimely death. Her uh, boyfriend, um, Benedict Wall, yes. is about to arrive as my son, who's been living in America for a long time. And George Mason has been there right. now for over a year. So, um, yeah, we've got Lots a few. Of Kiwis. And look, that's, that's just on screen. There's three or four in the wardrobe department. The head of makeup and her assistant are both Kiwis, you know. I'm, yeah. I'm trying to work on an accent, bro. <laughs> yeah, that, that, was, that, that was good. That was not good. That was not good. Hey, Ray, it's been an absolute pleasure having you in the studio. We cannot wait till you're back mm. here with um, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. I can't wait to see what they do with Home and Away and how Alf gets out of it. Alf goes on an extended cruise around the world, perhaps. Oh, I'll take that. You never know. Yeah. So it's nice. Yeah. And the thing is, you can't wait to be back. The show is great. Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. If you want to see Ray in the show, it starts in Auckland on October the 14th and tickets are available right now.